It's time for fun, learning, commentary, laughs, and more care of the most diverse group in the genealogy and family history world. Welcome to Black Pro Gen Live with your hosts, Nika and True, and the baddest panel in these pedigree streets, Angela, James, Linda, Alex, Ellen, Tony, Shelly, Teresa, Bernice, Felicia, Willie, Renata, and Tasia. It's Black Pro Gen Live, genealogy, family history research with flavor. Good evening, good people. What is going on? It is Nika Smith here with Black Pro Gen Live, and we are so grateful that you guys could join us for this episode. If you can believe it, we are absolutely 110% crazy. Why are we crazy? Because tonight we are subjecting ourselves to probably one of the most brutal things we've ever done as a genealogy crew. I, I think I can pretty much say that uh, I can say that with my gut at this point. We are submitting ourselves to something crazy. What are we doing tonight? We are doing an entire episode of Ask Mariah, but not just any old Ask Mariah. We are willingly sacrificing ourselves to the handwriting gods tonight, you guys. We asked you all to send us the most horrible pieces of handwritings you have ever come across in your genealogical journey in hopes that we will be able to decode the mysteries of genealogy lore for you and help you break through these crazy brick walls. And, you know, it's it's going to be a journey tonight. There's going to be quite a few laughs, uh, going to be a lot of, uh, I don't know, questions, raised, debates, all sorts of things. So regardless, we got you. If you have a question or a comment tonight, be sure to join the conversation now. It's taking place on YouTube at the top right of the screen, at the bottom of the mobile app on the YouTube app. Also, feel free to tweet us at Black Progen and hashtag your tweets, Black Progen. Also, be sure to go ahead and like our Facebook page, very active Facebook page and, tw and uh, Twitter account when the show is not happening as well. So be sure to get in where you fit in. Also, if you'd like to get a reminder about future episodes of Black Pro Gen Live, here is your reminder to set reminders. All you need to do is head to the YouTube channel and click subscribe, or you can click set reminder on the episodes that you are interested in. And we have something that we need to uh, talk about briefly tonight. What am I talking about? Free stuff. Now, I know I'm not the only person on earth that likes free stuff. We all love free 99. Free 99 is the best price you could possibly get. But what if I told you that we have some amazing free stuff for you guys? Like over the top amazing free stuff for you? All you have to do is send us your praise report. What's a praise report? Well, of course, if anybody has been in a church where folks get up and give praise reports and they talk about how good the Lord has been to them right? It may be during devotion service before the church service starts, right? We want to hear your praise reports about Black Pro Gen Live. What has this show done for you? What have you learned? What are the tips and tricks that you have picked up? What are some of the valuable gems of knowledge? Maybe you were on Ask Mariah and some of the help we gave you, you know, uh, helped you get further in your genealogy research or Maybe you were able to find an ancestor's grave, whatever it is. We want to know and we want to celebrate that as a part of our 100th episode. And you may have a chance to actually be on the episode with us. So be sure to get those testimonies in by November 1st. You see, I gave you a little tight deadline, right? I didn't say I didn't say you, you had until November 25th. No, we are not waiting till Thanksgiving. You have until November 1st to submit your praise reports to have a chance to win some amazing free things like, I think there's there's some books in there. I think there there's an ancestry membership in there for an entire year. There are 
coaching time with folks. Oh boy, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So be sure that you get those praise reports in. All right, here is the team with the dream who is going to willingly submit themselves to handwriting scrutiny this evening to start us off with her amazing necklace, which I'm not exactly sure what it is. Ellen Fernandez Sacco, what is on your necklace? And good evening. You have to unmute yourself. Hey, oh. well, actually, I just did it for you. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Um, it's Ellen Fernandez Sacco from Tampa, Florida. Um, it's actually a little, I actually made the necklace. It's a little um, uh, turtle that's hanging. And it's All got right. like spirals on the back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Look at see. Yeah. I. I. That's another thing that I do too. I also make jewelry. <laughs> All right. Earrings. Yeah. Well, I. Well, I make earrings. I used to make necklaces and stuff too. But everything I was making was like super heavy. I don't know why I was doing that. Oh. You know, Yankee ear down and whatnot. Um, next up, Grandma, soon to be new Grandma again in the house. Renata, how are you? Good evening, everybody. I'm doing just fine. Renata Yarbrough Sanders here in Newport News, Virginia, just back from the Big Apple and probably heading back soon when grandbaby number two makes an appearance. All right. All right. Coming in from, okay, these are the South Carolina blinds. So I believe I'm correct. <laughs> Oh, that, that's crazy that I know what people's houses look like and I know where, where people are sitting. How you doing, Tony? I'm good. I'm good. Hello, friends. Tony Carrier from the Center for Family History at the International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina. All right. All right. Also joining us from Maryland in black hooded sweatshirt for the evening, our resident Y chromosome and friend in genealogy. James R. Morgan III. Good evening, everybody. James Morgan coming to you all from the DMV uh, by way of my home state of New Jersey, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm especially happy to be on this episode because I probably have the worst handwriting of anybody in the Black Pro Gen universe. So, I, you know, this, is, this should be really exciting for me. <laughs> well, that's debatable because Ellen said that she had the worst handwriting. Well, she's a doctor, so maybe she might have me beat. I don't know. We'll have to do a competition later. Or maybe, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, a handwriting. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll both do a handwriting exercise and let the, the, the chatters uh, decide, right? Yeah, you know, a hand write off. Okay. There you go. So that that's what it'll be. Maybe, okay, so Renata, can you figure out what the sentence is that they both have to write on a piece of paper? And then we'll, at the end of the episode, we'll figure out whose handwriting is the absolute worst among the crew. Okay, Renata, Renata is developing the sentence that Ellen and James are going to write. And then we as a panel and the viewers are going to figure out who has the worst handwriting. True Ann, how's it going there in Fort Knox? Girl, cold, but I'm here. <laughs> Girl, True <laughs> Lewis, yay. <laughs> I know she, she we, got, we got the green specs on the night, boy. We're, we're hanging out. We are hanging out. Hello, 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 chatters. What's going on? Gary Franklin, my cousin Raymond Reeves, Dale Colston, Teresa Vega, one of the panelists, Neff Hawthorne, who's here with us all each and every time just about Black Pro Gen Live. Dante Eubanks, thanks so much for joining us. We love you, Patriva Mac, Zelda Ross. Oh, XKX2012. Hi. Just said hi. <laughs> Lady uh, Laddie Lau is here, Chris Green. Um, and this is, he said this is his first time um, catching the show live. So thanks for joining us live, Chris. We got to make sure we give you a shout out because you haven't been able to join us live any other time. So Angela Walton Raji, another panelist in the chat room. Hey, y'all, you know, before we dig in deep, and yes, we did take submissions for this, we've got to show you some examples of what you can come across in your genealogical records. Cause I, so here's the thing. I think folks think that everything looks fabulous all the time in records, right? Like, you know, when you get that pristine census, you know, where the handwriting is just like, mm, you know, it's like a good soup on a cold day, you know, it just falls down all nice and you can read everything and they were just the perfect penmanship. I think people think that all documents are like that. Like you're just gonna, you know, the genealog genealogical uh, uh, 
spirit is just going to fall down and everything is just going to be transcribed already and it's going to be easy to read, right? <laughs> Ooh, let me show you an example of what people deal with. Look at, oh, uh, uh, okay, I'm, wait a minute, a am I supposed to read this stuff over here on the right? <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I'm wondering y'all, am I, uh, this, am, am I, am I supposed to read that? Mm -hmm. it, okay, but wait a minute, how, but it looks like, Lord, how we, how we gonna do this y'all? Well, cause this looks like water damage. Mm -hmm. It's actually mold, I mold. think, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, looks like mold. Okay, so all right, all right. So let's say, let's say we don't, we don't have, you know, let's just zoom in, right? Because it might just be bad from from afar. Okay, okay, we gonna we gonna zoom in and see what we got. Hmm. At least her oh, name's right. on the left. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is why but I'm glad still. we have a mute button because I'm back here hollering. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just want people. Okay, so we zoomed in, right? Z right. Zooming, zooming in. D did it help? So, uh, this, people are saying paper mites. No, uh, no people are water. saying a damaged it's image. Water mold. It's water and mold. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we've also, I mean, in this case, we don't necessarily have where. Oh, you know what? Let, let, let me, let me go. How about, let's see. Oh, this is better, isn't it? Yeah. And I wanted to share the original, like when, oh before there was, before you could get this stuff online. Yeah. Well, well hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -huh. Let me, let me, let me, because remember, you know, if we zoom in, if we zoom in, that's going to make it better, right? Well, it helps. It can help. <laughs> let's right. see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So in this scenario, we have bleed through from the other mm -hmm. side. Right. Right. We don't have mold, but we've got bleed through. Bleed so that through. means you have to be able to decipher between, you know, this and that. So, so Ellen, I, I want you to show the people what this it is, looked like before oh it was digitized. And this was digitized. This is what it looked like before. Oh. Wow. And this is what I tried to do. Blow it up to try to get something out of there. Wow. Yeah. Just, just yeah. keep, just keep, just keep, show, just keep holding that up so people can see that little, that, that blob of microfilm love that you have <laughs> right there. And like then go to the other something retracted. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that looks yeah. like it's been, a, it looks like the Mueller report. Like, oh, yeah. Really looks like the Mueller report. <laughs> and, 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 and with and, this, you try, like, try to print it out light or try some, or, you know, it used to be that you would get like a yellow sheet of, um, acetate put that over that was a trick that people have and i think people can still do that mm -hmm. but um at least now on family search there is uh on the tools you can adjust which is just astounding when you had to deal with this um you can't adjust for uh contrast and exposure and then by playing between the two you can kind of dial in and you, you can actually read the whole thing pretty much and um one thing i was really curious about uh he, he neil lopez soto He's got like a whole string and they get progressively worse in terms of handwriting and bleed through. And, um, and then he dies of malaria in like 1934, something like that. And then he's done this for like 20 years and then it's somebody else who's filling out the paperwork. So you also kind of wonder about the condition of the person who's filling these things out, not just the condition of the paper as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have people whose handwriting is like really unsteady. Um, or they've used ink, uh, you know, versions of ink that have just eaten through the paper. I've, I've purchased old documents off of eBay and literally you could look right through the page because where the ink was, it just ate the paper. You mm. know? So there's all kinds of conditions and it's not like, and usually museums and special collections, they get the best. They buy the best. <clears throat> they usually get the most pristine documents, you know? So, yeah. But it's good to know to, that these things come up. James, were you going to chime in with something? Um, I was just going to say we're also assuming that I, I believe the document was in Spanish. Uh, we also got to we're also assuming that people, the person who may need that document, may not even speak the language that that the document is in. So um, that that adds another layer of complexity um, to handwriting. Sometimes, you know, right. those right. of us who are English speakers, you know, we're we're so used to everything being in English. Well, 
wasn't always that may not have always been the case even in your own family so that, that's a whole other added element as well to, 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 right. to consider with a document like that mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna do i'm gonna actually show people uh, when ellen was talking about um family search and the tools there and i do have to agree with her on this um, that they do have better adjustment tools on family search. You mm -hmm. probably, some people don't even know where this is and people didn't know where the catalog was. They don't know where these tools are. So we would be remiss if we did not tell them where they are. So normally people are just paying attention here. You may come over to print, right? And you may come over to, um, what is it? The download area, mm -hmm. but you wanna go to tools and adjust image brightness and contrast. And this will bring up the screen and you can darken, right? Contrast is, is in between, that's grays, right? So let's say I wanted to bring this all the way up. This to me is a better copy of this image than what it, what it is. And when you click apply, you can flip pages and it will maintain whatever the settings are that you have. Now, let's say you have a document that is just horrible, it's very hard to read. You can also invert the image. And of course, inversion, whoops, let me switch that down. Of course, inversion is the opposite, right? It's the positive versus the negative, right? So then you'd come back over into your adjustment and you'd have to adjust it based on the inversion, right? So you'd have to bring the brightness down. And so, of course, there are people in the chat room saying, I did not know you could do this. <laughs> yes, you can do this. Okay. So to be fair, let's, uh, we'll go to Ancestry and we'll do the same thing. Is there something else you guys can think about before we jump into the cases um, while I log in? Because I don't want to um, waste people's time until I get to an image. Anybody want to throw out someone we can look at on the census for this? For image adjustment? On census? Don't yeah, on the census, anybody doesn't matter. That um, plus a negative McCart. button there, you can. No, no, no. I, I'm I'm saying, give me someone to search for, so I can. <laughs> Calvin, Yar jo Calvin, Joseph, Calvin Joseph Yarborough. <laughs> Calvin Yarborough. Jo Calvin Yarborough. Can okay. You and where are we looking for him at? Lewisburg, North Carolina. Okay. L O U Lewisburg. Oh, okay. Thank you, because I was spelling it that way. Because uh -huh. I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> okay. And I'm in Louisville, but you know, I, I got a Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, right up the street from hometown, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it's yes. spelled L-E-W-I-S-B-U-R-G. Well, okay. when I speak into my phone, um, I have to say Louisburg, otherwise it will spell it L-E-W, but if uh, I say Louis, then it will spell it L-O-U. It's so frustrating. Wow. Yeah, that's like Louis, Grandpa Babe is Louis or Louis, depending on who you talk to. Now, you know, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> she has a thing for Grandpa Babe. I don't she know. Does. He's just my man over there. <laughs> Girl, he was everybody's man. Let's just say that. OK, <laughs> he was out in the streets. See, I picked true story. One. <laughs> true, look, true story. My Jean that was on the show talked about how one of her teachers, when she found out that she was Babe's granddaughter, the woman could not stop talking about him in her class. And this was five hours south in New Orleans. So that should let you know what Grandpa Babe was doing. All right. Those so are you my can, grandparents. You, these are her grandparents. And so you can invert colors on Ancestry and that's pretty much it. <laughs> you can turn the images, right? Uh, if you click this little toolbar here, you can rotate left and right, flip horizontal, flip vertically. So flip horizontal and vertically, that's right. We're gonna flip it this way. Now imagine how this, this that image we just saw, redaction, right? Redaction acts of defunction. <laughs> that's, what I'm gonna call, that's what I'm gonna call Ellen's document, the redaction re defunction, right? We could use this flip horizontal to get the bleed through so we could right. see what you know what we don't mm -hmm. need to pay attention to and then you can flip vertical if you want to and then you can just switch everything back exactly how you want people in the chat room are really i mean you know see this is why you watch black pro gen live it's because right. you get all these tips and tricks <sighs> all right so moving forward now that you guys are going to conquer the world with your uh contrast settings and brightness and all kinds of stuff um, we're going to move into case number one and case number one was submitted by our amazingly awesome. Uh, what is your grandmother name, Renata? I haven't asked you this. My grandmother. Yeah. Do they call you nanny, granny? Oh, oh for me, grandma. 
Okay, say so call you grandma. Okay. Grandma. Okay. Because mm-hmm. Chandler says grandmommy. So, you know, grandma. and my, my grandmother thought my grandmother thought granny sounded younger than grandma. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't ask me grandma. why, but but our our own gra- our own grandma here mm-hmm. has submitted the first case for our panel. And it's not too bad. Case number one is what's the cause of death? Did I add enough stank on that? Maybe I need to do it again. <laughs> case number one. What's the cause of death? We have a we have a death certificate from the Commonwealth of Virginia Bureau of Vital Statistics State Board of Health, register number 1717, issued for Alan Walker, a resident of 1227. Is that first street? 42nd. 41st, 40, 41st, oh, 41st Street. street 41st, 41st Street. 41st Street. And so we need to find out what his cause of death is. And we we don't know what in the world that looks like it says trunk callus of neck so we're gonna zoom in panel what say you actually i think it is trunk house of of, (laughs) (laughs) he said he said trunk alice lord help us this is is gonna be a long night (laughs) t-h-e-c-i you know i'm I'm happy that this is one this is one of the first ones we're doing i'll tell you why because i find that with when it comes to like causes of death it's like we're used to looking at like, you know, occupation, wife, you know, relationships. And then you run into these medical terms. And if you're not a doctor, it's like, what, what is that? So um, I, I definitely mean this is, a, this is definitely a good one to, to look at because trunk callus might be it. But I don't have a medical degree and I don't know what that no, is. No. <laughs> it's a trunk callus. What the hell is trunk callus? <laughs> it might be. I don't know. I, we have to. I, look, I'm going to look. look, look I, well, you know what? Let me, I'm I'm it it might be a, look, might be a thing. Could that be traumatic? I think it's traumatic. I think it's traumatic. traumatic. I think like, it's traumatic. Because her. Yeah. Because she. Because so she's got. She's got a partial transcription. And so she's got blank blank plus shock crushed between. And I, she has dead head, but I think it's a uh, crest, crest head or, uh, dead or heads. drain head. I think it's drain head. It could be drain. It, it's dead heads. I, Is I it a dead head? Up. Yes. And okay. I know what he did on the of railroad. Two mm-hmm. cars. Okay. okay. Yeah. Two of two coal cars. cars. Yeah. And then VA, I think it's railroad. Yeah. But one of my tricks for not being able to find out causes of death is to use the National Institute of Health use their dictionary and then I will go in and Mm. like attempt to spell what I think it says and then it will correct it for me. So that is one of my, um, yeah, okay. So Patriva Mack is saying traumatized neck and shoulder. Mm -hmm. James is still on trunk callus. He believes it's a a condition. (laughs) Don't be mad at me if I just text you trunk callus. I'm changing my passwords to all of my stuff as trunk <laughs> Trunk <Alley. laughs> So yeah, so someone says, okay, Angela says truncated. Truncated. Okay, I you mean his that. head got cut off? I could I could Well, see that. that's a possibility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um now I know I thought the shock we were pretty sure of, but that truncated. That could be neck. Truncated. Truncated neck but see that 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 check that check thing that's whatever that check that check is that yeah that that's that to me is not that don't look like yeah and and the character before it looks like almost like a plus sign like it was traumatic something and shock yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like i could you know uh, this some people may have seen this i've posted this before Mm -hmm. um it's unclear whether the, you know, what looks, what some people are saying neck, which no one had ever suggested before that. Yeah. That how many words are we looking at? Are we looking at three words, two words, one word to me, we're looking at three. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. two words and a, and an ampersand. 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 But it's just really unclear. I did try to call Norfolk um, coroner's office to see, if there were um, records that have uh, been kept, but they did not have anything from anywhere near this time period. So I just don't know. I don't know, but I like truncated. I I, I think that that's, it's a little possibility there. 
I think so too. Yeah. Truncated, truncated might. Sounds like it's either. He's either smashed <laughs> or. Room. Okay, the let me go look the so word up. <laughs> the chat, the chat room up. is so funny. You said just T dot 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 neck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, truck well, Allison made me out. Well, 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 one one thing is for sure is that I'm I'm going to be uh, in the morning copywriting Trunk Alice. Uh, it, will be, it will be available uh, by prescription from your doctor. Um, there, there are some side effects. You know, I'm going to have one of those really cool commercials with a man in a bathtub, a woman riding a horse. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Oh my gosh! I want to zoom out again. Remember, somebody's got to be skipping through a meadow. Completely right. unbothered as you right. read all the side effects for Trunk exactly. Trunk Callus. Okay, when they did come out with the miracle drug called Trunk Callus, do you mm-hmm. know I will? I don't think I'll be able to make it through the rest of the day. Like I'll be done. <laughs> I'll be done because one is coming. It's coming. What were you it, gonna say, Ellen? It looks like there's a T E S at the end. That the T is like this, just that little dash, you know. But, yeah. Uh, it looks like truncates neck and shock, crushed between. Uh, you know what? You might be right. Truncate neck and shock, shock crush between the cars. I guess dead heads of two cold yeah. cars. By George, yeah. I, I think she's got it. <laughs> well, so Ellen Reed, say that oh, again. Oh. Truncate <laughs> neck and shock crush between. Um, I, I that between dead heads. Oh, of between two dead heads cold of cars. cars. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Ellen. I made I, the reason why I started laughing when I asked you to read it again is because it sounded like I was Pat Sajak, and this is the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> it does sound like that. <laughs> What's your answer? Truncated <laughs> neck and crushed between. Congra- blah, blah, blah. Congratulations! You just want a new car. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Hopefully, it's not a cold car. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Seriously, Angela said, "Text for the commercial. Do you suffer from trunk callus? Then you need to take our new painkiller." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nip it in the bud. Take John Callis. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Gosh. All right. Well, chat room or anyone on social media, if you think that we are completely wrong about this, tell us about how wrong we are. Um, and you know, uh, let us know what you think. But we think I think the truncated, I think truncated is has won. Um, we're not a, no one suggested truncated before did, this. Did you see the no. time underneath there? 18 months? 18 months and eight days. Oh no, that's that a code. That's a code. No, okay. that's a code. I think okay. I think this is wow. uh I think that's ICD nine. It's pre ICD nine. Okay. Um, okay. Meaning, you know, uh, when you're when you go to the doctor and they have to code your condition for them to enter it in uh, and bill for okay. it. I think this might be a predecessor to that. Or you know, because the vital statistics they had to track uh, types of deaths, if they were accidents, sure. things like that. It's probably. Well, a I would have thought this was immediate, but I, you know, and then I saw the 18 and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> and just um, so on the newspaper article, it says Mr. James Allen Walker of Lambert's Point was killed at the Virginia Railway Coal Pier Saturday, December 30th, when he was crushed between two cars. So mm. his head could have. That's what truncate nice. means, right? Mm-hmm. The head came off from yeah. his trunk. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah if, he was, if he was bent over, it would have been. Oh, Jesus. To short. Yeah. yeah, his head got cut. Oh, Jesus. Okay, hold on. We're going to share the def- definition. Truncate. Verb. Shorten something by cutting off at the top or end. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Mm. I don't know what the frequency that was. I, w- I bet there were like tons of accidents before that wouldn't get reported or you wouldn't even know. Well, this yes, was my uh, grandmother's first husband, and then she lost her father the same way about 10 years later. Oh, oh that's my terrible. God. Wow. Wow. That's absolutely awful. Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, Neff Nef, Nef, Nef is saying truncle, neck shock, crush between. But I, I still think it. she's saying like truncle, you know, like a form, like a variation of truncated. Nice. But I, I, yeah, I, I, mm, mm, mm. all right. All right. Well, that's Lord, been God very bless. helpful. Thanks everybody. God bless Calvin. Cause or no, no, no that's not this Calvin. Calvin. Oh, we okay. looked at Al- <laughs> we looked at Calvin's senses. This is Alan Walker. <laughs> God bless Alan. And Lord, I don't even want to think about that service. People, was, they were passing out at this one. Cause this is the tragic death. I already know it was a lot of folks falling out. I can tell you that. And I was 27 even years old. I posted a link oh, to yeah, a gosh. blog post about it. Wow. 
Thank so I, I have you. a question. I, I have a yes, question because I, I was thinking about this earlier today. Um, a friend of mine posted a picture of one of his ancestors and was and I was reading the obituary and this man had five wives, four of whom preceded him in death, right? And I just want to know, am I wrong? Like when I see those type of things in obituaries, if I like start to suspect that maybe like the, the common denominator, is, is, am I wrong? Because like <laughs> childbirth, I mean, that took out so many women. And and what what but think about it. It's a different five, story. If you that's said a, a lot. Woman, no, it's a different story. If you said a woman survived five husbands, okay. Because yeah. to me, that's like okay. They could have had high blood. You know, she could have knocked them off. But for a man, especially if he had five wives and he had a whole bunch of kids, he wasn't trying to lose a wife because she was the one that was primarily taking care of those kids. That's right. So right, why right. would he kill them off unless he had life insurance? Okay. That's okay. Another- I'm just, I'm just I'm just asking the question because I when I when, like when I heard Renata say that about um about her, her her grandmother like it just triggered me I'm like every time I hear stories like that I'm like I start suspecting like you know maybe it's just me I don't know Mm-mm. moving Mm-mm. on it ain't you moving on all right case number two submitted submitted by our lovely Civil War pulling folks who are part of the panel because we have a lot of those uh. I can't read nothing. That's number two. <laughs> I can't read a thing. That's I don't clear, know what. Man. Well, and I think it's clear too, but not everybody is able to read handwriting well. Like, you know, and matter of fact, I have to put my glasses on for this one. I'll tell mm-hmm. I want y'all to know this was a, a, a pension file that was more than a hundred pages long. Ooh, wow. Every page was written in this hand. Wow. <laughs> I'm to thank that person. <laughs> oh. Lord, oh wow. Lord. All right. So for me, it says uh le something, it's the name, lay 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 something about three years before his death. Now Greenwood LaFleur. Oh, LaFleur. Ms. That's probably Mrs. LaFleur Green, Mrs. Greenwood. Mrs. Greenwood. Okay. Yeah, Mrs. Greenwood. And something about LaFleur or LaFleur. Well, we do know it's purchase was LaFleur. LaFleur. Yeah, purchase yes. Charles just before, before the war. The war. Mm-hmm. Charles uh, returned, or yes, I think that's returned. Yes, returned yeah. uh, In May or June following. Yeah, it's, it's something. Charles returned the. Uh, it almost looks like and, the army, but. It doesn't make sense. Maybe it's returned to the army and with and and, and something in May in or June. May or June May. Charles entered the army. Yes, the yeah, army and, and returned, and returned in, May. in May, May or June or June following. following. He had uh, following. Yeah, or he had had for something. Wife, wife, wife Letty, Letty, Letty. Letty. Had, had been, been married, married a year, a year, a year or so before, before the war, the war. Or, or before, before he, he returned, the army. returned the, army. the army. Yeah, and a short, and time. And a short time afterwards, Words. he had, had been in the army five or five six, or six months, months yeah. when Hannah was born. When Hannah was born, yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't have been 22 or 23 years yes. old mm-hmm. when, when he married, he married Letty. Mm-hmm. And, and often, 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 even sometimes, first. maybe even times spoke, spoke of, of her, her as being his, his first, first and woman. only wife. And only, only wife. wife. Yeah. I can I not read this. Maybe surmise. <laughs> surmise. <laughs> Whether I think that might be surmise I mean, of my own knowledge that been, he had, right. I cannot had been married. That he had something been married uh, before. He yeah, never been he married. married, Letty. That he had never, that he had been, never married. been married before he married. Before he married Letty. Letty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Look, Hannah there you go, Tony. The only. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. <laughs> <laughs> 
on the chat for me like Greenwood look like I, you talking about you it said LaFleur and Greenwood I'm like that's that's Mississippi that's a county it that's a city what it's you Cal- talking about as a person <laughs> it's, it's Carroll County Mississippi and these people were uh, uh sold in South Carolina taken to uh, Greenwood, Mississippi. I mean, I'm sorry, to Carroll County, Mississippi, and they were purchased by Greenwood Lafleur. That's what we do know about the background behind this document. <laughs> wow. like, that's what like, Greenwood Lafleur is in a county named after him. That's what I was thinking. Well, there is okay. a county well, named after him. Mm-hmm. See, okay, see, that's what happens. Well, all right, fist bump team. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a that was a good one. Don't I'm, you wish that, that you could always have a group yeah, of people really? reading documents yeah. with you? Maybe yeah. that's what maybe that's what Truncalis does, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> reading all out loud to yourself. You take, that's what I'm saying. You take Truncalis, it keeps you from reading out loud to yourself. And somehow in your mind, a group of five other people come and they sit on your shoulders and they transcribe a document with you. That's mm-hmm. what Truncalis does. Callous, that would be great. I need that. <laughs> need that when doing crossword puzzles too. Oh, and, uh, a genealogist. And, and FYI, uh, Angela is in the chat room lighting it up because that's why I know Greenwood Lafleur. He was he was a major Choctaw. He was the principal yes. chief of the Choctaw Nation. Yes, he was. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. See. Okay. Look at y'all bringing all the receipts and whatnot. I want Trunk Alice James. I need you to not go to the guy that that patented uh what was the drug remember and he bought the wu-tang album there was only one copy oh yeah of yeah yeah I knew you're talking about. I knew you're talking about. yeah yeah Shikrelli. yeah yeah don't go to him no, we don't no, no, need no, him to make no, our no, drug no, and no. we don't need the people who have the the high as my mama say the high as hell uh <laughs> insulin we don't need right. them either we need somebody who's gonna make trunk alice almost free right but not Okay. And then that way everybody gets the power of the the uh okay. the trunk the uh transcription. Okay. You take it 2 hours it before you go to read a document. <laughs> I'm that. We'll, 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 we'll make it happen. Listen. Oh, Jesus Lord, this is so funny. Oh, I'm my your God. brother, I'm your sister, I'm your You know what? And watch people are going to be asking us push them, for for Trunk Alice t-shirts. That- we need Trunk Alice t-shirt. Yes. Prescription. They would, that movement. They would sell like oh, cupcakes. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. you'll have a record signing with the trunk Alice. Um, anyway, um, Angela says there's a county in Oklahoma named for Greenwood LaFleur as well. Mm-hmm. Freedom of the Five Civilized Tribes. If you haven't checked out that episode, we haven't. We filmed it like three years ago. Mm. Get on the bus. We've been on it. All right, this next one um, is a pretty cool one. In fact, I didn't think I would have any submissions for this um, until I was sitting at my table. Uh, what was that a few days ago? And I was like, oh, this will be perfect. So this is a a will of a free man of color who lived in Woodville, Mississippi. And he was part of the Tras 250, um, actually didn't become part of the Tras 250 because he was emancipated by Israel Trask's father when the man died in his will. And so the will of the slaveholder called for him to him and his wife and one of his sons to be freed. And then what I discovered through reading this will of this free man of color was that he had other children that were not emancipated when him and his wife and his son were emancipated. So I could read through the text pretty well. It actually calls for most of his, most of his stuff to go to enslaved people. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is one word in here that I don't know what in the world they talking about. Bureau. Bureau. It's bureau. 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 Is it Bureau? The Bureau like and bureau the bed and yeah. bedstead on which I sleep. So okay, so bureau. I was I was I was Googling burying. I said, what what kind of furniture is a burying? Boy, no, that's a bureau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bro, the shift row was my mom would call them. Yeah. Go true. in my shift row. I used to true, didn't true, never know what true. that word was. True. You just went full midway Alabama just now. I yes. <laughs> Go in my shift row and get my robe. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I cannot. I, one, I grew up bad. saying that we didn't call it the dresser or the closet or bureau or whatever that word is. It was the shift robe. Right. <laughs> And that just, go, that just goes to show again how putting another set of eyes on something 
yes. that, yeah. you know, can just make all the difference, especially now here comes the teacher in me. You know, we all have different background <laughs> knowledge. So <laughs> some of us saw right. Bureau right away. You right. Know? But uh, I was sitting here. I was like, yo, boot, booty in your bedstand. <laughs> Girl, I was trying. Yeah. I, I Googled burying. I was like, is that a form of furniture? I was going to go full antiques roadshow on this it's, thing. It's the dresser. Cause I, cause Yes, yeah, it's a dresser. So I know what a bureau is, but I just okay. was not. Yeah. I was not. It's I was not thinking. Normally, that. you call it a dresser bureau if you're going to say bureau. <laughs> I've never true, seen it by itself. I never have seen a dresser bureau. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Look, I need you to stop on it. paper. But when well, in I, county, um, I can't help it. But I, I need you to stop the... saying burl. You saying burl. You ain't saying bureau. You saying burl. But it is the dresser bureau. bureau. <laughs> when I was having uh, all the people here after my surgery were coming and doing stuff, I asked yeah. somebody to get something for me off my chest of drawers. And no, the person did not know what that is. And the person was my age. Do y'all know oh, what a chest of drawers is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. it's different words, and it does depend I, I, on what area I, I you in. Maybe. Okay, <laughs> hold on, hold on, yeah. James. James, let me explain something. Because in the Atlas School family, <laughs> you see how Renata said that all pristine and just educated, chest right? Drawers. <laughs> it's chest of drawers. It's, it's chest a chest of drawers, drawers. in yeah. my family. It's a chest of drawers. It's okay. one word, not chest <laughs> of drawers. It's <laughs> chest of drawers. Or go in that drawer. Go on that draw and give mm. me whatever. Right. Exactly. And I say draw. Mm-hmm. I can't. I say drawer. Drawer. I say draw. <laughs> right. It's like mm. it's New York. my friends would have to ask me, <laughs> "What did your mom or your dad say?" Because they thought they were speaking a whole other language. Like they could never understand anything, wow. mommy. And it would be like two words. It just they weren't using the proper Pennsylvania words. They was whatever they. <laughs> grew up with down in Alabama they brought that all the way up north with baby, them and that's baby, what I call baby, it let now let me tell you let me tell you there's a conversation in the chat room Uh-oh. people are asking about different furniture see. now somebody <laughs> said what is a chase lounge a chase lounge just think of what think of Diane Carroll so when you think of a chase lounge right <laughs> like isn't that the perfect example Diane Carroll like or I think of her or like you know um like I think of like Aretha Franklin, like writing songs in her bedroom on a chase lounge, you know, like it's that it's the, the couch that's elongated. It's really only for like one person. Like and a day bed? Yeah. Well, it, it's sort of like, hold on. Now we got to Google. Ch- I know what a chest what a is. Chest? I know what a oh, chest yeah. is. <laughs> you can but stretch like, your whole hey, legs out on it. You can it. stretch yeah. your whole oh. legs out on it. And the reason why I talked about Diane Carroll is because when I think, I think of Dominique Devereaux when I think of a chase lounge, because she would just throw shade at everybody every episode. And I could see her like having her legs up to the side and being <laughs> on the, on the, on the chase lounge, <laughs> smoking a cigarette. Like that's what I think of chase lounge. Like typically that's what I think. If people in the chat room are crying laughing at us right now. I can't <laughs> see right <laughs> now. <laughs> the, people are like, you guys are killing me with this episode. Just for educational sake, for you, for the young people, y'all know we love you because, you know, G- G- BBG is for the children. We gonna blow this up so right. y'all can see what the Chase Lounge is. Th- that's why I told you, see, look it. You see, there this you is really only for yes, one person. But you right? want to pronounce it properly. You don't Chase. use Right, you don't use Chase. Chase. Yes. yes. It's like a, <laughs> Nika, it's like a fainting couch back in the middle. Uh, <laughs> was that chair you when you when you got couch. grown, you wanted to get? <laughs> you know, what you said, because I showed you one one and then I, I messed around and got married and I couldn't get no Chase Lounge. Oh, <sighs> No, okay, are you clear, James? So now you know what a bureau is. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I was fine with the bureau. I, that, 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 I'm fine drawers. with that. When she said chest, didn't know chest of drawers. I, I didn't know that when I was in the world. Is chest of, okay. Oh, Lord. Okay. See, people, I love Black Pro Jam because people are throwing all sorts of terms, of antiquated terms in the chat room. Angela says, Has did anyone ever sit on a dive on a divan? Yes. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm like, that lover. was the furniture you were not allowed to sit on, Miss <laughs> That was the furniture in the Is front that room the that no? we weren't allowed to mess mm-hmm. with until Kyle. company came. We was lucky to sneak in there then. Okay. Yep. And if your mama had a vacuum and if she was a vacuum tyrant, if she yes. was a person that the lines had to be lit, you know, like straight. And if you walked, she would know somebody walked in there. If her lines had been disrupted, mm-hmm. child. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 
We yeah, we we, we didn't have a we didn't have a throwdown edict in my family that you couldn't sit in the living room. We didn't have that. But Ooh, you didn't go for Adam Vickers. We actually we I got some good pictures from my house, like the round chair we had with the nice oh, it was round. And mom had plastic on that thing for the longest. <laughs> And I got some good pictures of them posing pictures on that thing where mom would sit and dad would be up on the handle. So, yeah, they they tried to carry those Trester drawers and everything uh, every place they went from what they had. But I'm just trying to keep that. That sound when you get up off you, of that plastic in the summer. Oh, <laughs> Lord. And then, oh, did you ever fall asleep on a couch with plastic? Oh, yes, yes. Let me, let me tell you yeah. something. Y'all didn't y'all didn't grow up with Addie Mae Vickers, okay? <laughs> Addie, Addie Mae Vickers had what we call the white room at her house. And it was the first and the messed up part about it is it was the first room that you walk in when you walk in the front door, but she had a little plastic strip that you stay your behind on that strip. Don't you go on that carpet? <laughs> don't think you don't, don't you think about sitting on that white furniture or nothing. It was like it was like a museum tour. You just you look but you do not touch. Okay. You could you, you step nowhere. off that plastic, it was gonna be your behind. And don't I'm let that plastic, them little things get on your foot. Ooh, right. they would hurt. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. If they got turned over by accident. That's that's you right. Know. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because oh, we had God. that same runner. <laughs> and, 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 and the funny thing is, now I think about it. Too. But no, the funny thing is, now I think about it. I don't know if I know what. It, I don't even know if they sell that stuff no more. I don't even see it in the stores. You know what? That's a great question. Chat room, will you go and see if they still sell plastic for for, for furniture and if they still sell those plastic carpet runners? The runners, um, they, I think they do. I think. Oh. Huh? I mean, I actually have one underneath me here on my desk. <laughs> I swear I do. <laughs> I'll, I I'll take some pictures and post them later, but I, 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 I do actually I have that mean, piece of plastic underneath this chair. The thing about this covers. The thing about this this show that I think people need to realize is that I think <laughs> the panelists don't realize that we just pull things from like you know, it's like, oh, I've got a carpet runner, right? Like, who has that right there? Like, only, only us. Oh my gosh, everybody is dying. I, I'm about, I grew up I'm about, with this plastic, and I had to have it in my office. <laughs> I'm about done with Neff Hawthorne because she said the plastic exfoliates your legs in the summertime. I'm done. You know what? No, no. Ne moving forward, done. moving forward. Lord, we got Jane down? Gary. <laughs> Uh, where in the world is Jane buried? We don't know. This is the death certificate from South Carolina Bureau of Vita Bureau of Vita Statistics and State Board of Health. And Dale E. Colson needs assistance trying to figure out where in the world her ancestor Jane is buried. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Watery, watery. I think it's watery too. Yeah. It's watery. Yeah, there's a river. A w in the yeah, front. there's a river. Watery uh, yeah. river. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, the chat room did look up the plastic. It's available for fourteen dollars on Amazon, <laughs> and the runner is five dollars. Oh, run. <laughs> uh, just just in case you needed that part of your life fulfilled after this episode. <laughs> so, so we are we're thinking that it is watery. I think it's mm. W A T E R uh, E E. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think so too. Um, do you guys have any thoughts? Um, because I, I would imagine she may have Googled that. Maybe checking yeah. the geo names uh for the G US Geological Survey mm -hmm. and see if that's like an old locality that just yeah. isn't on a map anymore. Maybe you can um do a, a latitude and longitude to yeah. try to find it. And find a grave. There is there's a it, river it, called Watery in the area watery, around so it was in the old days called the Wateries. They would refer to it's it's in the upstate. Yeah. And, and there's a watery cemetery too. Cool. In GIS or somewhere uh, else? On, on Find a Grave. I, find I a Grave? Oh, yeah. awesome. her, her name is, Ga her last name is Gary? Yeah. Yeah, G-A-R-Y. Uh, what was her first name? Jane. Okay, I see Amanda Gary, Reuben Gary, Robert Gary. So there's some Garys there. What, uh, what county What county is this in, you guys? This is, uh, what is it Saluda? Saluda. Yeah, Saluda, South Carolina. Okay. I'm doing a I'm doing a query on the uh, USGS. Okay, so there is there was a watery church, and perhaps maybe the church was associated with the cemetery. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. And if you are not, um, if you don't know how to use the US Geological Survey um, to find an old place name, 
Um, I highly suggest that you go back and watch our episode on mapping because um, we covered that ad nauseum. So when I did a search, you get here, um, you've got Watery Church um, and this is in Saluda County, South Carolina. Um, and what you can do is copy and paste the latitude and longitude, the um, decimal values and take it into Google Maps and then uh, just paste it right into the search bar. And that will pretty much tell you where the church is. So the church was right here next to the, the Saluda River and the cemetery may be there or maybe close. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll see. Uh, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's in the cemetery. back of the church. Looks like. Yep. Watery does that look, like, does that look like a cemetery to y'all? No. Mm -hmm. Does it, that look like does. a cemetery? Does Isn't that, I, that it, looks like a cemetery to it me. It does. Yes. Mount yeah, Coney's like that. One, we got two, those two, slabs two, of concrete two. and then yeah. later, years later, wow. they would put a headstone in front of it. And look at the cross. See where he's telling you. Now, that's the church. Here's and, the and, thing. and it's an AME church, so you know, so you know, it's black folk. Mm -hmm. yeah, what you said I, that that hmm. sifts through. Now she's saying now that's the thing. Uh, Neff Hawthorne, Kershaw County, uh, South Carolina has Lake Watery, but this is what what. Let me see. Let me go back to the slides. Well, I was um, also going to say, can we um, zoom in on the informant because it tells where the informant is from, and that might be a clue too. Johnston, South Carolina. Oh, Mother Johnston. Sister, so McPherson. is that the same area? I don't know. No, Watery about. Baptist yeah. Church is in Camden, South Carolina. The Baptist uh, are Church. Are you sure? Well, I'm looking at a, a Watery Baptist Church cemetery. It says Johnston Watery. is also on the other side under, um, is it the doctor there? I think. Oh, Saluda. Okay. I see now. Yeah. See, look at this is not, mm. this is not close. Mm. Yeah. So, that so could be a hint yeah. Too. So that could be a hint too. So we can go back to the query and I would probably come in here um, to USGS and just type in Rotary and then South Carolina and see what features or what things pop up. It could be a church. It could be a cemetery. You've got, there's, um, but, there's several things. There's but, several water churches there's one in richland one in lawrence county one in saluda county um yeah here's my question is because we already found uh three gary's in this particular cemetery are they relatives are they you know that if she doesn't know there may be something for her to follow up on as well because we got an amanda mm -hmm. ruben and robert gary all buried at this same cemetery which, that you're looking at so okay what are, we, what are the odds of that yeah and this is uh you said this is this is the one in Saluda? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Well, oh, and I noticed that just came up in my searches. Uh, this is it. Somebody photographed all of the tombstones they could find in June 2014 on Find a Grave. And this is, it's a very large cemetery with a lot of unmarked graves. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah. okay. In the All cemetery right, well, can only be reached from the southwest by an old logging roll off Old Cherokee Trail. Mm -hmm. and, and I see a lot of and I'm looking at some of these headstones for the for this gap for these Garys. I see some fraternal stuff uh, on here. Mm -hmm. So so that may be another clue as well to say, hey, what are the other institutions in this community, and was right. this person mm -hmm. that you're looking for connected to them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here's the second one that she submitted because she was trying to figure out. Where in the world Robert Gary was buried, <laughs> oh. and it's watery. Oh, watery, watery church. <laughs> well, well, I got I got Robert Gary's um, headstone right here on my screen. Yeah, I was just looking at that on Find a Grave. Yeah. And he um, was saying the Undertaker was the what? Janitor? Now let me make sure. Uh, Amos janitor. and Sons. I think it's a janitor under 24, 1919. Yeah, this is the same guy. Because look at, I mean, Saluda unless the, County. Saluda mm -hmm. County and mm -hmm. the, the, the dates match up. Yeah. Yep. 1850, roughly, right? December 14th. Mm -hmm. Now it's December, December, unless there's another Gary, but the, the date of death is close. December mm -hmm. 23rd, 1919. Mm -hmm. Right. So that might, and they've got two children. Did he have an Amanda and a Reuben? Mm 
There's so many things going on with that. The spelling. Yeah. <clears throat> children of children of R and J Gary. Yeah, yeah R, R and J and Robert J. and Jane. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, it's a possibility. Can't rule it out. So so sometimes you have to do research to help you narrow down what something may say or confirm what you believe something says. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, I should say. I would say most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> we don't know where nothing is. So Dale is watery, baby. Mm. Um, all right. Now here's another one. This one's this one is our last case for the evening. And this one is from our friend in genealogy, Gary Franklin. Uh, this is another, we have a couple of emancipations, you know, sort of documents going on on this episode. Um, and this one is, uh, he wants to know what is said in this emancipation. So this is the full document. This is a couple pages and he's transcribed um, pretty much all of it, but he just needs help uh, filling in um, some of these words. Um, okay, Angela, uh, James, Angela is calling your attention. She said he was a Mason. Yes, she was. Oh, uh, you're Rob, talking about Robert, Robert Gary. Gary? Yeah, Robert ah. Gary, yeah. Okay, well, that means you need to get together with uh, with Dale. Look it, mm-hmm. she says she will check all that. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome, sweetheart. All right, moving on to Gary Franklin's folks who were in Orange County court minutes, February 1798 to February 1800, the 26th of uh, February, Wednesday, 1800. And so the words he can't figure out, I will read and you'll, I'll tell you where, where I'm picking up, okay? In the matter of Rachel, a mulatto woman, Billy, her son, and Suki, her daughter, mulattoes, formerly the property of William Freeman, late of Bertie County, deceased. In the petition of Francis Child, widow, and Mary Doherty, widow, children and representatives of the said William Freeman, deceased. Petitioners against William Freeman, defendant. On hearing the petition of the said Francis and Mary, praying that the said Rachel, Billy, and Suki, now residing in the County of Orange, formerly slaves of the said William Freeman deceased, be set free. It is duly proved and made, made appear to the satisfaction of this court that the said mulatto woman, Rachel, mother of the said mulatto children, Billy and Suki, have performed meritorious services, meritorious services uh, to her master, the said William Freeman deceased, and that he, in consequence thereof, left her and all her children clear and free from bondage and slavery forever by his last will and testament duly executed and proved and the said Rachel being identified by proof and the said Billy and Suki shown to be her children and thereby entitled to their freedom blank and Robert Freeman or you know it's a dash and Robert Freeman uh, son of the said uh, William deceased an executor of this of his the said William's last will and testament having duly uh, having been duly served with the copy of the petition and having appeared thereto by his counsel and having failed to answer thereto the same way heretofore taken pro confesses that's the first word taken pro is it confess mm-hmm. looks like a long s is at the does C- look like F- mm-hmm. SS, mm-hmm. uh, unless it's a uh, oh, Kappa. Uh, Mom, let the trunk callus fall, y'all. Is it a uh, or it's it could mm-hmm. be it's not a like a pro, it's not a Latin term, right? It's not a pro something, it could that's, that's be like thinking. a legal term, yeah. I, yeah, I think it is a legal term, yeah, yeah. Taken something and appointed to be heard at this term ex parte ex parte yeah. ex part yeah yeah I'm failing to put in his answer that must be a <laughs> i love how angela's chiming in the chat room it's a legal term thanks for helping <laughs> 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 thanks for helping angela oh, yes so Got that, but we don't know uh one second here's your Yes. Pro confesso? Pro con- could be. Yeah, because yeah. mm-hmm. yeah, it's a bunch of long yeah. asses. Yeah. 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 Do, do, do we have any lawyers? Ah, in the show? look, Perfect. I was right. Pro confesso. Yeah. Let me go ahead and, and add it in the. Uh, you know, yeah. I, hey, I have to rely on Judy. Judy, Judy has to just has to do some of my stuff for me because I, exactly. honey, exactly. That's the legal genealogist. For confessed. When the defendant has been served personally with a subpoena, 
and or when not being so served has appeared and afterwards neglects to answer the matter contained in the bill that totally fits what we were just reading all right, right. Gary, mm-hmm. you got pro confesso awesome. it's uh, hey hey pro confesso all right moving forward um and appointed to be heard this term ex part and the said robert also now failing to put in his answer or shoe or show any cause it is ordered and a judge and decree by this court and then he's trying to figure out that's here h-o-n for i was uh, i think it's herein i think it's herein i think Mm -hmm. it's abbreviated for herein okay um that the uh, said mulatto woman uh rachel hath performed meritorious services towards her master and uh the said william freeman and that she's the said rachel and her children the said billy and suki so we've got pro confesso um and then we've got uh court herein and there's another reference um, on this particular page, um, at the top, it says, be set free and liberated from all bondage of slavery whatsoever. And they and each of them are decreed by this court to be large, be at large as free persons with all the rights and privileges belonging to free persons of color, and that they sh- shall be known by the man's, by the names of Rachel Joel, Billy Joel, Suki Joel, and that the defendant, Robert Freeman, pay the full cost of this court. He thinks it's court. Or suit. or suit. I think it's suit. suit. I, think I think the full cost suit. of this suit, it's suit. Yeah, I think yeah. it's suit. Yeah, it's suit. Oh, look at, do you see how the trunk callus just completely fell down I was, for that I was, one? I was going to tell y'all, I was going to tell y'all, listen. <laughs> <We're> double dust. <laughs> look, and that's the thing. Gary has brought that to Maggie. And I don't, I've never seen the actual, you know, like, handwritten thing but i you know but we definitely helped you have com- uh, pro confesso and then we had uh, what was that hearing abbreviated mm-hmm. and then suit those are your three words yeah. all and, right and, and, and nika i think you, you brought up a, a very good point earlier that i want to make sure we drive home real quickly which is it's important especially because we are looking at legal documents and sometimes you're looking at military things and whatnot to, to really learn the phraseology of the different aspects that your ancestors may have been into. If they were into a fraternal organization, the military, um, a particular trade or skill, you know, it's, it's good to learn the vocabulary of these different institutions because then sometimes that will help you get past some of these blocks when you're reading handwriting. Because if you're not a lawyer, you may not have ever got pro confesso. You mm-hmm. know? Right. I didn't know what pro confesso know lawyer, was, or, or but, I know, know lawyer, but I know that right. they use pro Right. right. Like I know that that's a right. form of, of legal terms. Right. So exactly. Yeah. You got to learn yeah. the jargon, y'all. You got to learn the jargon. And yeah, there are a lot of lists online. It's not like people haven't extracted these already. And there was like Ada Zacks that had like all these ter- old terms that people don't use anymore. So mm-hmm. there, are ref- mm-hmm. there are resources out there. Yep. Yeah. And we've got some stuff. Um, True. I think you've, you shared it in the chat room um, this evening, right? Some of the handwriting helps. Um, yes. That, that we have. Okay. Uh huh. I just okay. got a few more to post, but I think I did about two or three already. But okay, um, okay. Well, those I'll, are the main I'll, ones. Yeah, we've got some main helps. Um, in fact, I like the BYU site. I think that one is actually kind of cool with the script tutorial. Um, that you can kind of look through to see what documents um, look like, and and it's you know really it's for help with indexing and things like that. And you can choose your own tutorial to study, and they've got documents in different languages. So if you want to learn more about how people um, wrote, and you know how we can try to it's decipher useful things, useful because we use it useful. for transcribing. You know, in Alabama, I use those all the time. I have those windows open to help me read stuff. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Here's an abbreviation. Back in the day, we used to have those old websites that would have like even the medical terms and I don't, they're probably bookmarked somewhere on my computer down low, but yeah, this so that's is just one. like similar to like that law medicine. Yes. You're talking about the Black's and, Law stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. with the codes you, for Alabama, you can I think they had one too, where like if it said 118C, like you saw earlier in the in the show, um, they can tell you what those codes mean. But they, I really haven't really done those too much because it spells out what's the issue. So, 
Mm-hmm. Look at this. This is yeah. National Archives of Ooh, UK. Wee. They have a whole little thing you can download here. Look yeah. at them trying to let me bookmark. To... Yeah, I was about to say. This they, oh, one's this too, is I nice. With, um, yeah. Mean, yeah. This one's pretty cool. And then we've got another mm-hmm. handwriting help um, from Family Search. Um, that True's going to share the link for that too if you guys um, need help. And this is language resources and handwriting helps. Um, when you're struggling to read old handwriting or unfamiliar with language. And so I don't know why this page is taking forever to load, but I ain't got the time to wait. Because you're trying to show somebody, that's why. You already know it's a hot mess right now. And then the last link um, that we're going to be sharing um, is from Ancestry. And this is another thing to uh, tips and tricks to read old handwriting. It talks about different styles and printing and enlarging it. Um, Another tool that I would also suggest to you guys is to maybe consider getting a um, more of a muckety-muck digital imaging software um, or something that gives you the ability to adjust curves along with brightness and contrast. Um, The, believe it or not, if you have a Mac, Preview does this. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the preview app does do this on a Mac. Um, sometimes I will take images into Photoshop, but that like has to be like a knockdown drag out. Like I really don't know what in the world this thing is, or I'm really trying to see what it is. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's something um, that uh, I would also suggest. Um, anything else you guys can think of before, before we move on to the Ask Mariah segment of the show? Nothing anybody wants to throw in? Not a single thing. They can run with it. All right. All right. Let's move on to your favorite part of the show. You oh, you guys are getting asked Mariah overload. Mariah is tired. She wants to go have a brandy um, and check on her greens. That's what she wants to do. She's tired. (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) This is your favorite part of the show. Ask Mariah, right? Where you, the viewers, submit your questions, queries, conundrums, and more to the panel. And we wait in live with research help specifically geared towards you. Panelists never see the queries beforehand. So you get a chance to see us work together live to help our genia buds get past their brick walls. Tonight's Ask Mariah is from Ronnie Thompson. Ronnie says... I would like help finding out what tribe my great grandpa, Isaac Mickens was from. He was born 1877 from Florida, but moved to Georgia. Also, could you find who his parents are, please? What he has, 1800 census off my family tree app. No DNA test taken. So we're looking for great grandpa named Isaac Mickens who was born in 1877, Florida, but moved to Georgia. Wants to know who his parents are, what the tribe is that his that he's from, and he has an 1800 census. I'm assuming that's 1900 if he was born in 1877 or 1880. This is copy and pasted directly from the form, so that's a that's a safe assumption. Right. Okay. It's a safe assumption. There are a lot of hands going up to faces, including with emojis in the, sh- the chat room. <laughs> um, where in Florida? I mean, depending where in Florida is going to depend on what, who could be connected, you know? So there's, there's another level of information that needs to happen here in terms at least of counties and, uh, and then take it down from that. So then I would be curious what the 1880 census is on there and he, and they may actually have more information than they realize they write already available to them yeah, on that because, census. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They're because, not extracting it, enough out of it. Yeah, because mm. if, if he was born in 1877, and if this is an 1880 census, right. he would have been about three or four years old. So right. I, I want to know what adult is looking after him. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a 1900 census, then that can complicate things a little bit more. But um, yeah, it's kind of hard if we don't know what, what document they're using yeah. to su- yeah. su- um, substantiate what is the 1877? What are they? What kind of document are they getting that from? S- and work yourself from that that paper. I can't tell. Is that supposed to be a census or he, a death certificate that said that was his birthday? I don't know. Yeah, because because like I'm I'm looking up Isaac Mickens now, 
online and there's several different Isaac Mickens that could possibly be his Isaac Mickens, but I, but, but we need a little, little, little more to, 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 to go on with that. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing on, on um, family search Isaac Mickens in the 1880 census for um, Jefferson County, Florida, precinct one. And it has his birth at 1877 in Florida. And then there's another, um, and they mentioned that he moved to Georgia. There is the 1930 census um, that shows Isaac Mickens born 1877 in Florida. And this uh, Georgia residence in 1930 was um, Brooks, Georgia, Militia District 1402. And there's a marriage record for Florida County marriages for Monticello, uh, Monticello um, Jefferson. So there's two records there for Jefferson, Florida. Hmm. That might be. Yeah, that's... There's 1885 Florida State Census that has Isaac Mickens born 1877 and his father is Isaac Mickens as well. Let me look at the um, image. Uh -huh. Let's see what it says. Those Florida State Census really helped too because they were in between the census year. Right. Yeah. Let's see what the, the image says. Yeah, I have I have one for Isaac Mickens born in Florida in 1878, who's with a Mamie and Ellen Mickens, which I'm assuming is his wife and child. I'm not sure if it's the same person or not. What suggestions it's, it's, would you give? What suggestions would you give him? Because you guys are finding multiple people with the same name. You're not sure it's the right person. Folks in the I, chat room are asking, how does he know he's Native American? You know, what, 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 do you, what kind of feedback right. do you guys have? Well, well, what I would do is I would, first of all, you want to isolate who, which Isaac Mickens is yours. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if this is your great grandparent, let's say, okay, do you, do you have him on a census record or something with your grandparents? Do we have the, do we, are we able to document our, um, our submitter back to a particular individual on a document? Once we do that, then it would be a little easier to, kind of figure out what direction to go from from there but we got to isolate which one is who which one is mm -hmm. the Isaac Mickens we're looking for mm -hmm. look at all the other things that you know about him and his family and and um see if those details help you sort out which right. which one of these multiple records right and and and, and Tony you said something very important there we got to go with with what we know not mm -hmm. I mean it's, it's okay if you heard something right. still take note but go with what we know is factual to kind of build the case. Right. What Ellen said earlier. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Any other Basically feedback? Basically what James and Tony said. Yeah, yeah. like a timeline. To, once, you're, once you've got, once you have the one document that you know this is it, then just right. pull everything you can out of there. Look at the, it. the occupation, look at like, look at a page before, look at a page after, see if there's any other Mickens just by chance mm -hmm. to see, because sometimes you even have uh, parents living pretty close, if not right butt up right. against somebody. I mean, there's a lot of, you may already have a bit of information and you're not realizing it because you just need to dig in the documents a bit more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely correct. Until he's right. Mm -hmm. Any other suggestions other than timelines? And, and making sure you have the right person. The native ancestry thing, like what what is the basis of that? Understand where that information is coming from. Is that an oral history that's handed down? Did you find out something in your DNA test, for instance? Um, where, you know, try to try to kind of suss out where that information is coming from. And then you can also look at old maps and you can see like their tribal maps of people. You could see who was there before they got moved off the, mm -hmm. off, the, off the landscape. And that might give you an idea. Maybe you have a group that's nearby and they're actually part of that. It's not like people, everybody's running around with registration or that they have an official card saying that they, they, they belong to a specific, a specific right. group or tribe even. So um, 
you know, think, think, think carefully about that too. You know. He did say he didn't have a DNA test, but I hope that he's able to do that. Or, you know, maybe some of his relatives that have already tested, they can, you know, right. try to work together and piece that. But mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping you take the DNA test. <laughs> and, and also the DNA test is also just going to tell you you've got that ancestry. It's not going to say that you're Choctaw. For sure. Or whatever. Yeah. And, 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 and when you think about places like reservations or where people, I mean, you have like already by 1870, massive amounts of displacement. So you mm -hmm. will have groups from many different places in one spot. So yeah, that's another reason, you know, don't, don't assume that it's just going to be clear. You mm -hmm. know? I agree. Too, well, so put that out of documentation. I yeah, I agree. And I think, um, I think you have some work that you need to do. Maybe come back um, and circle, circle back to us later. Um, of course, folks are asking about the native claim. You know, people forget the Seminoles and other groups. Um, there are not just five civilized tribes. Mm -hmm. There are multiple First Nations groups of people. So um, Angela asked, you know, is it maybe features is the reason why, you know, physical features is why he you know, believes this information and maybe what he was told, whatever it is, um, regardless. Um, you know, we always want to try to substantiate things as best as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So Ellen, I have something I want to show you. Well, oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> that's a little bit better. That's Granted, there's still blobs, what, you know, but I went in and did thing. the curves. <laughs> yeah, I went in and did the curves. And this one, I played around with it a little bit just now, but yeah. at least you can make out what was on right. the other side of the page God is with good. this. And it's it's so ironic. Like this guy, he actually got in people's grandparents on the documents. So you have like four generations on a lot of this guy's stuff. Eugenio wow. Lopez Soto before he dies of malaria in 1934. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. That sucks. And then yeah. we have bleed through and right. that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay because we have Trunk Alice. Ha. <laughs> he wasn't prepared for that. All right. Do you need help with your brick wall? Reach out to Black Pro Gen Live with your query today. A link to submit is in the description of each and every episode of the show. Remember to be super specific. You see tonight we were trying to help Ronnie, but we didn't get all the information we needed. And there were a couple of, you know, potential issues of what he provided us. So be sure to be super specific. You cannot be overly specific. Um, let us know what records you searched, what oral history you have, if you DNA tested and more. The more you tell us, the better. You just may be selected to be featured on one of our upcoming episodes. Moving forward into current events, hopefully you saw this. If you didn't, this is stinking amazing. Um, demolition had begun inside of a former church in Columbia Heights, this is Maryland, that um, she's turning into the new home of the Studio Acting Conservatory. Now the boss of the, cr of the crew working was online um, to tell the founder about a remarkable discovery his guys made, an enormous of the Last Supper that was hidden behind a drywall for more than a decade. The building on Home uh, Whole Mead Place Northwest had been slated to become condos before the conservatory bought it earlier this year, built in, in 1980. Uh, to house the Home Baptist Church, which moved to land over Maryland in the 90s. After that, it became a building for the Latter-day Saints. Isn't that interesting that it became an LDS building and they didn't know this last supper with Black people was hiding behind the drywall. Interesting. The signature on the lower right leaves no doubt at one point it joined the building's history. All rights reserved, 1982, Akili Ron Anderson. Anderson lived his whole life in Washington and began installing art in D.C. area churches in 1985, mostly stained glass windows, a painting, one sculpture, the Washington Post reported in 1993. After that, uh, that would be um, this altarpiece. Everyone who visited the church was taken aback by it. New Home Trustee Board Chairman Willie L. Morris told the Post reporter at their eye room. It was very important to us that we all have, uh, that we have a black artist. All the other Last Supper pictures we've seen were always in a white framework. The church wanted to take the relief with it when it moved, but it couldn't. They couldn't take it. So it just left there. Wow. Anderson now teaches at James's illustrious university. H U, you know. <laughs> and some of his artwork is easier to see, particularly his work Sankofa at the east and west entrances of Columbia Heights Metro Station, as well as the stained glass at Andrew Rankin Memorial Chapel and the Prince George's County Courthouse. This is interesting. 
Hmm. Angela's questioning why it was put behind drywall in the first place. Well, well look at the lease. See who got who got in there. Uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well. Mm -hmm. I mean, because think about it. Look at look at where the ground is, mm -hmm. and how massive this thing is. Right. I mean, yeah. there's what maybe two feet, three feet from the bottom of it to the to the top of you know what I mean to the it bottom. Must be of really it. heavy. So yeah. I wonder why the church could why they couldn't move it. I mean, if they could hang it, then that means it's mounted. You know, so. Yeah, it may Super. have been. It may have been financial. It may have been. Uh, uh, yeah, that's thing. right. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, you know, for those who aren't familiar with D.C., you know, Columbia Heights is a, a, a very, I guess, kind of happening area now. You know, they've got the mall with the Target and Best Buy's there and stuff like that. So to find something like that there and then like that metro station, I'm, I don't live that far from there. I'm not far from there right now at all. Um, you know, it just shows you how as time goes on, erasure can, can, can occur. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and people don't even realize, you know, I mean. I honestly, I didn't know. I know the, the, the art they're talking about by the by the train station. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, who he was, what have you. But now, you know, it's important to share to share the, the, the sto these stories. Yeah, Angela is saying that she she said perhaps why it was put behind the drywall during renovations was because it became an LDS church. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. touching that. <laughs> <laughs> gonna touch it those all right <laughs> exactly those <laughs> special years have you all checked out all the subjects we'll be covering during season five did you know that 90 percent of the stuff on this list has already been taped mm. wow. well yeah because i mean think about it we only have one more show in october and then three more and that's it wow so, yeah all of that has been done this year. So be sure to head to whoisnikasmith.com for a downloadable schedule. And don't forget to set your reminders and subscribe. Also, here is your reminder again to send us your praise reports. We want to hear from you. We want to know the ins and outs, the pluses, minuses, the deltas, whatever else from Black Pro Gen, anything that you've gained and gleaned. We want to hear from you. And if you submit to it, you'll get a chance to be on the show for the 100th episode airing live on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019. Um, and you'll get a chance, of course, to potentially win one of several prizes that we have available. Also, we got to talk about the next episode, which is coming up. I can't wait for this one because we finally get to talk about all the stuff we cannot stand when it comes to... <laughs> Mm -hmm. When it comes to genealogy and TV, what are we going to be talking about? Well, yes, genealogy and history are in vogue in popular culture, largely due to the number of TV programs that are themed around the topics. In episode 97, we'll discuss the implications of the two converging and, you know, just uh, the entertainment that has been thrust upon us at this point and the effects they have on, on us as an industry as a whole. Join us for In the Act genealogy and history in popular culture airing live next tuesday october 29th 2019 6 p.m pacific 8 p.m central 9 p.m eastern and of course this is rounding out our family history month series you guys have been spoiled beyond belief not only have you received the power of the truncalis but you have had a show every single week this month so <laughs> please Indulge us, right? Because we've yeah. been going at it. We've been we've been going at the it. The struggle so. is real. <laughs> the struggle is all types of real. Anything you guys want to say closing out from our handwriting episode? I think we all survived. We managed to make it. Um, nobody lost any limbs. Um, <laughs> eyes, my, eyes. I know. I, know. I was going to say. And me and True went to the eye doctor today, so that. <laughs> That tells you what, how dedicated we are because we I couldn't see nothing till this evening. Wow. <laughs> but we love y'all. Yeah, for me, for me, it wasn't like that. They dilated my eyes and then usually I don't have a problem. But, the, you know, she even gave us a little roll up glasses. Usually I don't even get these, but she gave me a little roll up glasses to put on my eyes when I walked outside and you see, I didn't even take them out. And mm -hmm. then, I, then my eyes started bothering me. So take care of your eyes. That's also a part you of- You have of, to. Uh, I walked out with my Michael Kors though. I, was getting <laughs> the, I don't know what those well, little 3D, they look like them little glasses you're supposed to use when the sun is doing its thing. And I was like, mm, 
No. <laughs> well, you, well, you know, well, you know Truncalis is great for your eyes, Nika. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they trunked us today. They sure did. True. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Tony. We love you. Wait a minute, you. wait a minute. I have oh. the sentence. Oh, you do? Oh, that's right. Yes. What are they writing? We got to give them time to write it down. Get a piece so of paper, James. I want you. Ellen. You got your paper. Who is it? James and who? Oh, it's me. James and Ellen. Right, okay. On. So when you first gave me this assignment, I immediately knew the sentence, but that has now gone away. Originally, it was simply going to be the <sighs> rain in Spain falls mainly on the plains. There's probably people who have no idea what that is, but now here's your sentence should i type it in the in the chat come on with it okay let me say it first <laughs> i'll say it first and then i'll type it in our chat let's go to watery so we can truncalis pro confesso at the chest of drawers <laughs> ah. let's go to watery so we can truncalis pro confesso at the chest of drawers. I don't know if I'm spelling watery correctly. All right, you said let's go. You said, let's, let's go to watery so we can truncalis pro confesso <laughs> at the truck ch chest of drawers. <laughs> truncalis. It's too oh, late. It's too late to be laughing for this hard. <laughs> yeah, so, the thing that's so funny is that the chat room is just right, now looking. Look in our chat, Ellen and James. <sighs> Let's go. So I will repeat. Pottery. I will repeat. And if you all feel free to share your, if you feel like you have horrible writing, feel free to share your horrible writing. The sentence is: Let's go to watery. So we can, so we trunk Alice pro confesso at the chest of drawers. Oh, so that we can trunk Alice. Sorry, I left the oh, word so we off. can, so we can trunk yeah, Alice. Is there, is there, yes. Is there, is there. Okay. So Ellen, <laughs> hold on. We'll hold, we'll hold it up. Okay. So hold up. I will pin your video until James is done. Okay. Oh. Ellen, that's not too bad. That's right. Angela Walton, Raji. Thank so you. So we trunk Alice. I'm sorry. Cause I was writing the wrong thing. Oh, look, do I look gotta in the write chat, it? James. Yeah, I see it. Okay, so now James is getting his stuff. Uh, go to Watery. Lord, now we all want to go to Watery with Dale. Right. I, I, let's That's show your let's show your penmanship again, Ellen. I think I don't think it looked bad. How Ellen. Doing, Ellen. Let me let me see your let me see it again. Okay. That is not bad. Not at all. I can still read it. She said prescription for <laughs> truck <Ellen. laughs> Neff Harthorne said while sitting on a divan kicked back, back on the chair. <laughs> That's <a> even clear. <laughs> well, okay, James. Some of that in too. James, okay, well, let's see. one of them are bad. No, no. Yeah. I would say for argument's sake, I can read James's a little bit better than I can Ellen's. Okay, True is joining in on the competition. True, that's just pretty. We've got another <laughs> another entry of, of let's go to Watery. Okay, I am not. I am not. I am not writing. Let's go. I'm not writing it. But feel free, you all, to share your Watery Chase Lounge experiences. We would love to see pictures. Post them. Post them to Facebook. We would love to see them in the chat. Post them to Twitter. Make sure you hashtag your your. Uh, well, some, if y'all start posting them to Facebook, people who didn't see the show will have absolutely no idea what's going on. And that's a great marketing tool. Right. But we right. need to be watching us. <laughs> exactly. Got exactly. to come in the chat room to hear yes. all of this good information. Yes. Oh my gosh. Hilarious. Oh my gosh. Now awesome. I hope I don't oh. have the fair lady in my mind all night. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'm glad you, all... you knew what that was. True. <laughs> yes, I'm a TCM buff. I I geek out for that. <laughs> oh my Old gosh. musicals. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone Yay. for joining us this evening um, for Black Pro Gen Live. We have, of course, had a true ball with you. Be sure to join us next week for episode 97, where we're going to be talking about genealogy and pop culture. Uh, we love you. Share it, send us your pictures. And of course, don't forget to take your trunk, Alice. Have a good evening. Thank you.
Black Pro Gen Live. Black Pro Gen. Black Pro Gen Live. Black Pro Gen. Hello, everybody out there. Black Pro Gen Live. Black Pro Gen. Black Pro Gen Live. The unapologetic Black and people of color viewpoint. The place where evidence tells the stories. I don't think I've laughed at.